All right. So today I'm going to talk about um, a project that I've been working on uh, for a while. So this is about uh, Confluent Kafka connecting to MongoDB. Uh, Mon uh, Confluent Kafka is basically enterprise version of Kafka where they actually provide support and uh, uh, support for open source uh, Kafka project and other uh, connectors for various databases. So for this, um, uh, uh, what I'm showing right now is a high level architecture where I have various components of uh, this particular project. So if you see, I uh, have a uh, Confluent Kafka block and MongoDB Atlas block in here and all together within the Google Cloud platform. So to do this, uh, I had to create a Google Cloud account uh, and a Confluent Cloud account at the same time a MongoDB account, MongoDB Atlas Cloud account. Um, though we have three different accounts, Confluent Kafka, when, uh, when we are about to create a cluster or environment, it actually asks us to pick a cloud provider and also a, a region. And uh, that's why I... That's where I actually selected uh, Google Cloud Platform and also US Central Region. I'm gonna talk about why I had to pick US Central Region uh, uh, in a second. Um, at the same time, I had to create an account with MongoDB Atlas, which is a MongoDB Cloud account. Uh, um, again, uh, selecting Google Cloud Platform as provider and uh, US Central as region. Um, then when once I created these two accounts, uh, I'll, I'll start off with Confluent Ka uh, Kafka. So let's go ahead and look into that. So uh, I'm not going to go deep about how to create all these connectors in this video, but I'll reserve those things for another deep down uh, approach, how to achieve all these individual components uh, in this project. So yeah. But for, uh, for the purpose of video, I'm just showing you a high level overview of what exactly is going to happen when something happens uh, in an application and that's connected to a database and that uh, and database is actually uh, connected to Confluent Kafka. So in this particular application, uh, we have a simple web application that is uh, hosted in uh, Firebase and behind the scenes, uh, it actually uh, calls uh, REST, API, uh, REST API calls to MongoDB through cloud functions through cloud functions and anytime uh, if there is any CRUD related operation that happens in this particular MongoDB database, uh, Kafka, uh, Kafka, which is actually uh, you know connected to this Mongo database through a source connector, uh, will listen to these uh, changes uh, and then uh, within the Kafka environment, we actually create a topic where these changes are uh, logged into this particular topic. So MongoDB source connector together constitutes a producer, which uh, uh, logs these changes and uh, you know, uh, any kind of uh, events that happens in MongoDB, MongoDB database into a topic. So when once we have uh, uh, messages loaded into topic, we then uh, consume these uh, information in, within this topic from uh, consumers. So consumers could be uh, any downstream application, any kind of, you know, uh, ETL processes, or uh, it could be an another, a completely different application where the application doesn't, ha uh, doesn't know that the database even existed. So these downstream application have no direct contact with these, with this particular database. So behind the scenes, MongoDB, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Confluent Kafka will be handling all those uh, 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 message passings from producer to topic to consumer. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll see uh, um, what happens when we uh, uh, do something in this web application. So within this web application, okay, even before application, let me show you a database. Uh, this is uh, MongoDB Atlas uh, console where we have a cluster and, the, and within, the cluster, uh, within the cluster we have a bunch of database and within this database I am actually selecting this particular collection and which has around 500 uh, documents in it. So 
let's refresh it so that we'll see the difference. So it has 507 documents in it. So let's go back into our application, which I created. Uh, I, I, might I might have to like refresh it uh, a couple of times because uh, cloud functions uh, are usually passive because uh, they take, uh, uh, they're, all, they're, they're like, they, they are triggered the moment when, uh, when a function is being called on them. So we need to, we need to run a couple of, uh, you know, uh, refreshes and that's how it kind of starts up and running. So let's let's create a simple, uh, okay, talking about this particular web application, it's a very simple web app where you have uh, three tabs, profile, update, and sign up. Uh, pretty much a uh, CRUD operation where uh, you sign up uh, with, a, uh, with, with some input elements and then that that uh, input elements basically get stored into uh, into database, and then when you try to load, it gets loaded into uh, into this in this particular tab. And if you wanted to update, you're going to here, and then you update it. So our our goal is to see if uh, for this particular aspect, our goal is to see if uh, a record is being uh, a collection is being added into uh, a document. Sorry, a document is being loaded into uh, a collection in MongoDB database. So I'm gonna go ahead, uh, I'm gonna say Jim Halpert uh, 19, I would say, and then I would say Jim Halpert, uh, and I would say address Pennsylvania, I would say, okay, Kent, Ohio, and then I would say an email address at dandorbufflin.com, and then I'm gonna create a user. So let's go ahead and see. Previously, when we refreshed it, we had uh, 507 uh, documents. So if we refresh it, it should have 508. Let's see it. There you go. So we have 508 uh, documents here. That means uh, uh, documents, uh, that, that particular document uh, is being loaded, was, was loaded into this particular uh, database. So, uh, ignore about this command line shell. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about it a, in a second. So now that we know that uh, uh, data is being loaded into database, let's get into profile and update sections. And let, let's let's assume a scenario where we have a web application and we wanted to capture uh, user activity in terms of uh, uh, you know if, if if a person changes uh, uh, if a user changes his or her email address or uh, mail address or uh, phone number of anything that's art. So in this, in this scenario, I change, uh, okay, I, I, let's get back into this architectural diagram. So a user changes uh, a data, uh, his information that gets stored into a MongoDB database. Uh, behind the scenes, I want Confluent and Kafka to constantly watch this particular database to see if there are any changes. And based on that changes, I use that change data, I, I capture that change data and use that information for other downstream applications. So that is the whole idea of Kafka and that is what we are going to see if we were able to see changes in database without actually directly connecting to database using Confluent Kafka in between. So, for that, I'm going to use for for the sake of this discussion. I'm not going to go deep into uh, you know any downstream application. Uh, so just to understand the concepts of uh, Kafka and how we can consume, um, simply using Confluent Kafka's uh, command line interface uh, to see if we can consume any changes in this particular database. All right. So let's see. For that, what I did, uh, I created a compute engine on uh, GCP and installed uh, Confluent Cloud CLA onto, onto it. And then I logged in into it uh, using my uh, Confluent uh, Cloud uh, credentials. And then I was able to see all my env environment information and cluster information and all, all sorts of API keys uh, uh, from my Confluent, uh, from my compute engine. So there is this uh, a command called uh, Confluent, uh, I should have here up and running, yeah. There's this command called Confluent Kafka Topic Consume, 
And this is my topic name. Uh, I haven't I haven't shown it uh, uh, how I create it uh, because it's out of scope to, to for the for this demo. So uh, this is my topic, and this topic is basically saying uh, uh, saying that to saying uh, this 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 topic was created to uh, load messages from a producer into this uh, into this topic uh, if there are any changes in that particular database that I showed before. So I'm going to run this command, and this should show that yeah, yes, Kafka consumer is starting. And then I'm going to go back into my update section of my web app and change this address. I would say, uh, so Scranton is in Pennsylvania. So I'm a, I'm a big office fan, so I kind of used uh, the addresses from uh, Scranton. So let's say, I don't really remember the address of Jim Halpert from Scranton, but I would say, as well, yeah, it's a, it's a random address that I don't know if that exists or not. So, okay, so now I'm actually saving this particular uh, mail address of this user, Jim Halpert. And then ideally, if we, if I haven't clicked saved yet, ideally if we save here, uh, the saved information should get stored into database and there is no way we could know until unless we connect to the database. That's why we have Confluent Kafka to see if there are any changes. Right, so let me go ahead and hit uh, save here. And if you see towards my left, uh, there is a change data capture that is being captured on my uh, command line interface. So if we investigate this particular JSON, we see that, uh, yeah, operation type, it says update. Make sense? So this particular operation is an update operation. So it uh, Confluent Kafka actually captured this information. And uh, uh, since we have created a specific topic to see if there are any changes in uh, customer database, uh, a, producer, uh, a producer kind of pushed that message into topic and the consumer, uh, 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 in this case, a command line interface uh, uh, kind of listen to those changes. So in a real world scenario, this consumer could be a downstream application, let's say a mobile app or a web application or an ETL process, it could be anything. So let's let's go ahead and see uh, if, there, uh, if there is any, uh, if, let, we'll see if, if we can change a couple more things and see if there is anything uh, that uh, uh, Kafka uh, consumer is listening, okay? I would say Jim, Pam, Let's change the email address. So again, it says an update. Uh, let's delete a record from this particular database. Okay. So I don't, I don't have a, a I don't have a delete operation, uh, you know, built for a web app, web, web app. So I'm directly trying to delete it from, uh, from the database. So I'm gonna randomly pick, uh, let's say, you know what? Let, let's pick the Robert Burns. Let let let's burn Robert Burns. And how would I delete it? I think uh, I think it should show something like that. I guess maybe. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is delete. So I'm deleting this. It should show a delete operation. Yeah. There you go. So it says uh, an operation type of delete has been deleted, uh, has been done on this particular database called Sample Analytics of collection consumers. So let's try, let's delete a couple more. Uh, there you go, it says delete. Uh, let's add a new record. We'll see if it's capturing, I would say uh, Pam Beasley, 89, and Pam, let's say Pam Beasley, Audrey, I'd say Scranton. You know what, let's, uh, let's try New York, because why not? Let's say Pam Beasley at Dunder, dundermuslin.com. 
So this should create another change data capture which says insert. So yeah, I think, uh, okay, yeah, I think I missed one piece. So this is, uh, this is my cluster from Confluent Cloud and it should, it should have all these ripples meaning about you know uh, the consumers and uh, uh, let's see I know what let's go into topics yeah so it says 20, 20 messages 20 bytes per second has been uh, produced uh, and, and loaded into topics and at the same time 20 messages has been read sorry 20 bytes per second has been read into cons consumption this is because in real time, we were changing at the same time, uh, listening from a from a, a command line interface. Meaning, whatever whatever the change that is being produced is constantly being consumed from downstream application. Let's say if we don't have um, this uh, consumer up and uh, if we don't have this uh, consumer uh, not up and running, this would be uh, the topics would be. Only producer, only production will be, uh, you know, uh, producer will be producing messages, and consumers uh, won't be uh, listening uh, any of those messages. So they stack stack upon each other, when, and when an event we start listening to those uh, consumers, uh, these messages are listened uh, from downstream applications. So, so I think uh, that's pretty much. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and uh, I can certainly answer in the comments. All right. Bye-bye.